for two terms. So let's go to where he begins. Um, I think he talks about the dilemma we have, all of us, for my grandchildren and your children. So Norma, let's go to Eisenhower's quotes. Because therefore we are defending a way of life, we must be respectful of that way of life as we proceed to the solution of our problem, the same one Scowcroft mentioned. We must not violate its principles and precepts, and we must not destroy from within what we're trying to defend from without. He gave two inaugural addresses, which talked about his vision of the need to defend liberty. Let's go to those. For history does not long trust the care of freedom to the weak or, or timid. Next. Since the advent of nuclear weapons, it seems clear that there is no longer any alternative to peace if to be if there's to be a happy and well world let's go on we're talking about nuclear waste this is a hydrogen bomb at 3.8 megatons that we dropped on an agricultural field in North Carolina. The parachute opened, otherwise there would have been major damage to the bomb itself. That happened with the other bomb, there were two. How big is 3.8 megatons? We only use six megatons by every explosion in World War II. Why did we drop a bomb on North Carolina, because we believed that we had to have 12 B-52 bombers in the air all the time, 24 hours a day. So if the Soviets attacked us, we could destroy them in return. This particular B-52 had been flying for 10 hours up and down the East Coast and was being refueled in the refueling tanker, you've all seen them, um, noticed that fuel was cascading out of one wing and the pilot couldn't stop it. So the plane went into a destructive uh, cascade down to about 10,000 feet when it disintegrated, dropping both bombs. One of them went 18 feet in the earth. Why was it okay to bomb North Carolina with a hydrogen bomb? The comic John Oliver in something I show in my nuclear environments class said, because we knew we would always have a South Carolina, at least we'd still have a Carolina. That's, of course, humor on this terrible nuclear waste. Next. Only one switch on this little thing the pilot had kept the bomb from exploding. There were six, seven switches, and six of them had already fired by the time the bomb hit the ground. We came that close to massive nuclear waste in North Carolina. Next. There's another B-52 that flew all the way from actually North Carolina across the Atlantic. It refilled, it refueled in Spain, 
flew onto the edge of the Soviet Union, the European edge, flew back, but the pilot, they had all been flying by then 17 hours, approached the refueling plane too fast. Um, there was a huge explosion and they found three of the bombs, but the fourth bomb was this, and it took six months to find it in the Mediterranean. Um, three of the pilots survived. It got up within 80 feet of the surface and fell and it took this submersible submarine with no uh, pilots, human pilots, to find it again. Next. That is the Titan II missile, which is the height of a ten, nine story building with a diameter of 10 feet. It will go 6,000 miles and its warhead, which is in that black area, is more powerful than all the bombs used in World War II. A 19 year old person dropped, you can visualize this, a wrench down the side. They drop stuff all the time, but this hit the side, made a hole in one of the two fuel tanks that have to mix. And the next one will show you what happened. If we had more time, you can see the silo was totally obliterated. One person died. A 740 ton door was blown 200 feet. Um, and that's that. Next. This is in spot in Russia. I've been a dozen times not welcome back in the current leadership. They didn't know what to do with their nuclear waste at their plutonium factory 30 kilometers upstream from this village. So they just dumped the amount of radiation in the Hiroshima bomb in the only water supply for 124,000 people and didn't tell them. So they drank this stuff for six years. They hired a guard to keep people from going over the fence, but of course they did. Next. They had a nuclear waste explosion. And it, uh, they had to resettle 8,000 people. The radiation went 200 kilometers. Next. That's me looking very sad at the family of the guard of the river who died of cancer. Uh, the woman holding her face was the mother. Uh, when her son was eight, the one that died, he would wade into the water and get a water sample for her and then the authorities would come pick it up. The guy next to me is his brother. Family were never told to take the most simple public health precautions. Okay, next. That's where the Chinese did the same thing we did in Hanford and Rocky Flats, which is to 
create a vast several hundred square mile uninhabited place to make plutonium. They wanted to fend off American and Soviet aggression. Okay? That's where we made plutonium. The Hanford Nuclear Reservation. Um, something like originally 670 square miles. You can see it's uninhabited. That's a plutonium uh, reactor. Next. This is the plutonium fabrication plant originally 11 miles from Denver and you can see at sunrise how close houses were. Terrible. By then there were four miles. You, everybody in the class that's paying taxes is paying their fair share of 375 million to the neighbors in a lawsuit that took 26 years. It's mostly why it took Norma, Yokota, and me 10 years to do this 528 page book because all the secret pollution information was in the hands of the government and they didn't want anybody to know. They actually lost 2,600 pounds of plutonium when you can make a bomb from 10 pounds. Not a great stewardship of nuclear waste. And you're all paying your fair share. Next. One of the dumb things they did was put nuclear waste and cooling oil, plutonium waste, in 55 gallon drums and put them out in the weather year round in the Colorado changing seasons. Of course they leaked. Three fourths of the 5,237 barrels leaked. Okay. This is the Rocky Flats site. Hanford, 670 square miles. Hanford in four square miles. I mean, Rocky Flats in four square miles. Look at all the nuclear waste. It was all in secret. Next. This is an environmental crime. They had to dispose of massive amounts of water. They knew it but they didn't plan for it. So those are common agriculture spray irrigators and they would spray 24 hours a day all year long and it would run off site. So you saw an environmental crime they pled guilty to. Next. This is how it ended. That's one of the buildings. They cut it up inside and then blew it up and put dirt over it. Of course, no one thinks it's clean enough that close to where they are. Next. Albert Einstein was born in the late 19th century and died um, in 1955. He was a brilliant thinker of how the world works. And he published two papers in 
about 1895 before moving to Switzerland and becoming a citizen. Why is he important? Um, first thing, people in Switzerland didn't believe his radical theories. So he had trouble working. He had to tutor people. He won the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1922. Um, feels he made a terrible mistake in his life in writing our president, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and telling him he could make a super bomb, an atomic bomb. He was worried about the Nazis. He knew them. That's why he left Germany, became a Swiss citizen. And I thought he provided some ways for us to think about what we did. Well, what we did in a simple several phrases, we tried to achieve the limits of the possible without recognizing that we had exceeded the limits of the prudent. I made that point about Rocky Flats, about dropping those bombs. So one of his insights, he became quite a philosopher of the human condition. We cannot solve our problem with the same thinking we used when we created them. He'll expand on that later. This is a message for us all. Why I was so pleased to have an opportunity to speak to all of you because you're trying to do something to make a better world. In any event, this is what he said. Why is the world dangerous? The world is a dangerous place to live, not because of the people who are evil, but because of the people who don't do anything about it. Okay? You need to, you need a human understanding to achieve peace. Peace cannot be kept by force. It can only be achieved by understanding. Are we trying to understand the Iranians? Are we trying to understand the Russians or the Chinese? Um, we all have different views of that, but that's his message. Next. Technology can and is misused. I wanted to show you what we've done with B-52 bombers. I didn't show you the bomber that ran into the ice at 600 miles an hour in Greenland and disintegrated with four bombs on it. We were using technology to keep us safe. Technology, in his view, technological pros, progress is like an ax in the hands of a pathological criminal. Next. This got my attention. World War Four will be fought with sticks and stones. I know not what World War Three will be fought with, but World War Four will be fought with sticks and stones. Okay.
This is what we do. You must seek peace as a priority. You cannot simultaneously prevent and prepare, and prepare for war. That's what we were doing with those B-52s. We were prepared to bomb Russia or Soviet Union because we thought that was how the only way to prevent them attacking us not doing confidence building measures, not getting verifiable treaties where you trust but you verify. So quote President Reagan. Okay. You have to solve the consequences of atomic energy. We're not doing that well. The release of atomic energy has not created a new problem. It has merely made more urgent the solving of an existing problem. And he just gave us his insights into what our problems really are. Next. I love this. I've been looking forward to sharing it with you. No mouse would construct a mousetrap. Mankind invented the atomic bomb. The basic technology we did at the University of California, Berkeley. And then we ran all the weapons labs. Mankind invented the atomic bomb, but no mouse would ever construct a mousetrap. Last. This is a message for all of us of which nuclear waste, which we haven't solved while we keep on with nuclear power and nuclear weapons, which is the subject of my summer and fall class on the nuclear environment. The unleashed power of the atom has changed everything, save our modes of thinking. And thus we drift toward unparalleled catastrophe. So I started with General Scowcroft and then Supreme Allied Commander in World War II and President Dwight Eisenhower and ended with arguably one of the greatest minds of the 20th century to let you know how valuable I think your work is on altruism. So I turn my cell phone off so I have no clue what time it is. So I ask Bisma to take over. What time do we have left? Uh, we have just about half an hour left for um, questions or um, any other like follow-up conversations. I did want to ask you- Are you gonna um, grade me? No. <laughs> Why not? I mean, would, would you like to be graded? This is like a good like reverse situation. Anyone have any like? If I were in your position, oh, I'd have no choice. <laughs> and which is why all my tests, you know the questions ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Well, because I wanted you to really ask, have like, to think. So we now have time to talk about the present and what's on your minds and then um talk about the future so let's start you're the boss and the ringleader yeah so you mentioned a lot about what we've done like in the past and that there's been like um 
really no um, proper way that, for example, even just the U.S. has d disposed of nuclear waste, and well, we, that's resulted we dumped, in... We dumped 230 spots in the ocean mm -hmm. around the end of World War II. What's the most beautiful place in California? Arguably, it's the peninsula uh, between LA and here. We mm -hmm. dumped DDT off Palos Verdes um, with a permit, legal permit, from the LA County Sanitation District to Montrose Chemical. Now it's clear that we dumped at least 10,000 barrels off of the uh, Channel Islands. And if there was one place in America that I would like to dump nuclear weapons waste, it would be off the New Jersey shore. Because it's not California, right? Yeah. <laughs> and we dumped a bunch of barrels of nuclear waste off the Jersey shore, and they all didn't sink. So what did we do? We had jet planes come in and machine gun them. I mean, this is just stupid, right? Right. You don't believe me. I can see this in your face. Yeah, because it's just something you don't really hear about all that often. You know, you kind of hear more about I don't know, recycling and things like yeah, that. All this that is one nice aspect. Stuff. Yeah. I mean, Norman and I are part of running a program every Thursday noon on plastic pollution. Mm -hmm. Re recycling can be part of that, but the problem is so massive that we all know there's not only nuclear waste, but a disrespect for the health of the planet by this massive so these are free and you're all welcome to come and if someone doesn't know how to get a free invitation it's 12 to 1 the next three thursdays we love it because pollution what you wanted to focus on waste mm -hmm. if nuclear waste was the only thing we have no solution to spent nuclear fuel from nuclear power. 100% of my students don't want nuclear waste left at San Clemente, at San Onofre, which you drive by all the time you go to San Diego. Mm -hmm. They don't want it kept there for 240,000 years. So how do we get on top of it and now? 100 percent of my students don't want it moving up the five and by their house, and we have no place to put it. So it's collecting in over a hundred sites around the country. Why? Because we didn't even have a nuclear waste law till 1982 when we knew that we had a problem with nuclear waste from nuclear power and we still don't have a solution and the government said trust us we'll take care of it guess what the first thing was half the nuclear waste repositories were to be in the eastern side of the Mississippi where most of the power plants are and half were to be in the west. And then Cong the Senate decided they were happy to have waste passing through Utah but not staying there. And most nuclear waste by truck or train would, some 80% of it would have to go through Chicago. What president of the United States came from Chicago? Obama. So um, 
Then they decided that there wouldn't be any. This is true. Oh, I'm telling you only truth on your nuclear waste thing. Okay. I don't care if you believe me and grade me and come get the class and know the questions. We made a mess of the nuclear age. I mean, it's, and we keep compounding it. So anyway, they decided that there would be three possible repositories west of the Mississippi, but they didn't have to come by truck or train every 90 minutes around the clock for 20 years. But they didn't care as long as it wasn't east of the Mississippi. So the choices were Deef Smith, Texas. And we all know Texas has a very powerful congressional delegation. And Washington State on Hanford, where I showed you, but the Speaker of the House, and you know how powerful Nancy Pelosi is, Speaker of the House was from Washington State, and that was in his district. So that wasn't going to happen. And what state only had one congressperson? Nevada. So they were going to cite it at a place called Yaka Mountain, in the mountain. But then it would have to pass through Las Vegas. So people in Las Vegas are pretty influential. And then the another speaker, uh, Senate Majority Leader, Harry Reid, was from Nevada. And his whole career had been spent protecting Nevada from nuclear waste. So mm -hmm. it wasn't going to go there. So now we don't know where it's going to go. So it's just collecting on site at 107 locations, I think. Is California going to have any more nuclear power in your lifetime? San Ofri's closed. That's a whole story. Who's paying for that? We are. Most of us as rate payers to Southern California Edison, who owns 80% of it. Um, it's just, we, by waiting until 1982 to do something we could have done in the 50s sensibly, we now have no solution. Keep running nuclear power. There's only one power plant left in California. It's in Northern California, Diablo Canyon, and it's closing. And Californians, use, you've all voted in referenda. We have a referenda that there's going to be no more nuclear power in California until we solve the nuclear waste problem. You all Are there any that? solutions currently? Of course not. I'm not the good humor man. I'm trying to tell you mm -hmm. that that's why I love this class. It's a category A breadth. Um, and this is real stuff. But are we going to solve global warming without some new generation of nuclear power, not like the kind we have? Mm -hmm. Answer. We have two power plants under construction in Georgia. And why is that special? Because ratepayers have to pay for whatever it costs. And after Fukushima, which I teach, uh, Germany decided to close all its nuclear power. Mm -hmm. um, there are some sensible new technologies for very small nuclear reactors that can explode and are cheaper to build. So that's one of the exam questions in my class, which I would flunk because there's no known answer, but I'm giving the test, not taking it. Mm -hmm. But it's a thought question. Next. What are like 
the different sectors that we can invest in to help solve this? So would it be more like research and development or just oh, yeah. education or? All of the above. I mean, I think, well, let's step back. Do we live well with our use of energy? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Does the rest of the world want to live like us? Yes. The world energy development is going to increase 50% by 2040. This is 2020. People want to live like us. Now, the costs of solar and wind have gone down. Hydrogen is very promising. These expensive grids won't work in something like Sub-Sahara Africa. But solar can make a real difference. Mm -hmm. um, so we're at a point of needing to research all of the above. But most people don't know the depth of the problem. Mm -hmm. And that's not even getting into terrorism. How can we make it like a bigger priority for people? Like teaching it like in schools, like in... Um, yeah, that's why I teach yeah. this class and have discussion sections uh, when I run, they're all virtual now, mm -hmm. uh, but I run one and then anybody else can take them at several other times by Zoom. So your generation's better educated than mine. Plus, mm -hmm. we have to respond. We're not going to have a more peaceful and sustainable world unless people have access to energy, in my opinion. And right. how we're doing it, we've, um, since you've been alive, we've increased the temperature by 1.7 degrees. Um, the glaciers are melting in both uh, Greenland and Antarctica, which will raise sea level. And that's just one of our climate related problems. Right. So your generation's going to have a hard time leaving the world to your grandchildren than my generation did because we've lit a uh, fuse on a bomb and it's our stewardship of the planet. Mm. So we've got to work on all these things simultaneously. How's uh, that's a big, so big project. <laughs> How's my grade so far? Um, I would say... In progress, right? Yeah, exactly. So let's go to some other questions. Does anyone have any other questions that they would like to ask? Um, only, feel free to only, like drop them in the chat. ones first. Sorry? Only easy ones first. Only easy ones first. All right. Silence is golden. No, nothing. All right, so it looks like someone's asking, how do we educate our peers about this issue? Keep your work up on altruism and compassion. Um, caring for each other, getting concrete. Uh, Yemen has a population of 25 million. We were helping Saudi Arabia in their proxy war with Iran there. There's been no credible way to engage and stop it. A million people are at risk of cholera. And 
14 million are at risk of starvation. The um, UN Food Program is the recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize for 2020 for helping keep 300 million people from starvation mm -hmm. all over the world. So nuclear waste is a problem. You start with education and but so many of these, why well, I really welcome the chance to talk to your group, so many of these problems are what Einstein was trying to tell us about. It's how we think. It's how we observe the world. It's how we need to put more time into preparing for peace. We need to use technology better. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and someone was asking if there's a way that we can make a difference, like at a policy level. Sure. Um, and that is become informed yourself. There are a lot of people who teach real classes about this stuff. Richard Matthew teaches two quarters called sustainability. It's between um, urban planning and po public policy and earth system science. It's blending two groups that organizationally have to be separate, but they need to work together. And my hope for your group is you expand the membership. We sent you today's program so you can send it to others. Um, mm -hmm. Pollution is what we focused on in waste. Um, but to keep it manageable, I only chose a few examples. Mm -hmm of the nuclear side of nuclear waste, but coal and is a source of energy that's making the world worse, dramatically increasing greenhouse gases. Methane is a real problem because parts of the Arctic are melting. So it's taking courses here because we're pretty good at it. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of really good master's programs, uh, which, you know, UCLA had uh, 140,000 applications to get in. We had 135,000 com comparing or uh, combining transfers and first year student applications. Wow. So you're a very competent group of people as a class. And I didn't have a single person ask me to write a letter for them for graduate school who didn't get in either here or at USC mm -hmm. through a master's program because you're so competent and qualified as a group. Mm -hmm. Are there any ways to get, you know, directly involved with, you know, for example, research or any policies like here at UCI that you can recommend, um, at least as a first stepping stone um, love, outside of classes? I love UROP, mm -hmm. Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program. Norm and I were part of having a grant that funded 233 for the summer um, over four years. And um, you get that by your coursework, mm -hmm. uh, knowing what professors are doing research in what areas and go about um,
looking at their lab, coming up with a project, submitting it, particularly the summer program I really like. Mm -hmm. I found study abroad transformative to my life. Um, and we have a brilliant program in social ecology called the Global Scholars Program, mm -hmm. where you can go actually be immersed in a culture with, it's got three or four classes associated with it, and they go to parts of the world that are changing where their own time can help them transform. That's one of the most exciting programs we have. Professor Matthew really runs it. He runs right. the, uh, again, close to your value system, um, the Blum Centers for Property Alleviation. And I go to their webpage. These are all people reaching out to students to engage them mm -hmm. in real stuff. The social ecology has an advanced field study where you spend a year, academic year, in some setting and also meet the upper division writing requirement. Okay. So I talk about social ecology because I know it best, but many schools have these kind of inspired programs. Mm -hmm. That was an easy question. <laughs> I mean, that's what I had prepared, and we're just about to wrap up because we have five minutes left. So, um, you mean we can't go on? We we that that's our allotted time <laughs> um, between four the and five. Story of my life. I get interested <laughs> in real conversations. Mm -hmm. Would you be comfortable with um, having like you know people reach out to you now that you've? Um, spoken to our group, would it be okay if people were to reach out with like follow-up questions and stuff um, once they kind of, all right, that's great. Um, and then if we have any um, last minute announcements, Dylan, if you wanted to share anything um, or if anyone had any last minute questions, get it, give it a second. If not, then we just wanted to say thank you for joining us. We really appreciate your time and then also like your passion in, in, in this topic altogether. Um, yeah, but it's what you're doing with your altruism work. Eisenhower talked about it. The problem isn't evil people. It's people not doing enough to prevent it, mm -hmm. whatever the problem is. All right. Thanks for having Norm and me. Of course, thanks again for coming. And Thank then you so thanks much, for Professor Willie. as well. Okay. We will meet again, I hope. All right. Have a good one. And don't forget, plastic pollution is free and at high noon the next three Tuesdays. If you need, uh, I'll ask Norma to send you so you can send it to everybody how to register free. All right, sounds good. I and will send will up the quit promptly at one. So it's <laughs> yeah. like today with me cheated out of four minutes. Uh, I'm Why just that? waiting to see if there's going to be any more like last minute um, questions or this has um, been comments. Wonderful, and I appreciate spending the last part of Friday with all of you. Yeah, Back of course. Then. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.